Hello. Today we will be discussing some of Mendel's laws. But before we can discuss Mendel's laws, we have to learn some basic terminology. A gene is an inherited factor that determines a characteristic. An allele is one or more alternative forms of a gene. A characteristic is a general feature, such as eye color. And a genotype is the set of alleles an individual organism possesses. A phenotype is the specific manifestation of a characteristic. For a characteristic such as eye color, the phenotype for an organism is a specific manifestation, such as blue eyes. A locus is the specific place on a chromosome occupied by an allele. A heterozygote is an individual organism possessing two different alleles at a locus. A homozygote is an individual organism possessing two of the same alleles at a locus. Because humans contain two sets of chromosomes, one inherited from the mother and one inherited from the father, humans have two sets of chromosomes which are duplicates of each other, but they can also possess different kinds of alleles. Hence, this is why they're heterozygotes and homozygotes. Now let's discuss Mendel's experiments. Mendel studied pea plants, and he was a priest and a teacher at a local school. He conducted experiments from 1856 to 1863, and he discovered the basic principles of inheritance. For this reason, he is known as the father of modern genetics. Mendel chose seven traits for study and 34 varieties of peas. And Mendel's study was effective for several reasons. First of all, his plant was easy to cultivate and grew relatively quickly. Secondly, the plants were pure in genetic makeup and easy to obtain. Mendel was also successful because of the seven traits he chose for study. Finally, he adopted an experimental approach and used math to interpret his results. Now let's discuss monohybrid crosses. Mendel crossed organisms who differed in a single characteristic, and he crossed these different varieties of peas and interpreted the results using math. He crossed the pea generation, which means parent, which led to the first filial or F1 generation, which then self-fertilized to produce the F2 or second filial generation. When Mendel crossed a round pea and a wrinkled pea plant, which he verified were homozygous by crossing the plants for two generations, he, it resulted in a first filial generation that all had round seeds. When he self-fertilized the F gener F1 generation, it led to a three to one ratio of round to wrinkled pea plants. Mendel reasoned that because the F1 generation passed on the wrinkled trait to the F2 generation, the F1 generation must contain genetic factors from both parents, even though the F1 generation did not show any um, phenotypes of wrinkled seeds. So to form a monohybrid cross, you put all the possible gametes on the side of the um, Punnett square, which is simply a grid, and then you combine the alleles, or I mean, you combine the gametes to result in the genotype. For example, in this monohybrid cross, you can see that the um, organism is heterozygous for, round, or for seed shape. And so when you can cross these, um, when you can cross the gametes, it can result in three different genotypes, RR, both capital, RR, one capital and one lowercase, and RR, both lowercase. So now let's talk about Mendel's conclusions from his monohybrid crosses. From his results, he concluded that the F1 generation must have inherited genetic factors from both parents. And the F1 inherited both alleles, but only one trait was observed. Mendel called the traits that were apparent dominant and the traits that were not present recessive. Mendel's, now let's discuss Mendel's laws. Mendel's conclusions led him to several principles of genetics. So the principle of segregation states that each organism
contains two alleles for a characteristic, and both alleles separate into equal proportions in gametes. The concept of dominance says that one of the two alleles is dominant, and the trait is shown in the phenotype. Now, dominant alleles in plants are usually shown by an uppercase letter, and recessive alleles are usually shown by a lowercase letter, and the dominant allele is always put ahead of the recessive allele. Now let's talk about Mendel's dihybrid crosses. Dihybrid crosses are crosses between plants that differ in two characteristic, in contrast to monohybrid crosses, which are crosses that only differ in one characteristic. Mendel had a homozygous plant with seeds round and yellow, and another homozygous plant with seeds wrinkled and green. He again confirmed that these plants were pure by crossing, self-fertilizing them for two generations and seeing if the um, progeny had all the same traits as the parents. Now, when Mendel crossed these two parents to get the F1 generation, all progeny were round and yellow. But when the F1 self-fertilized, he got a roughly 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio of round yellow to wrinkled yellow to round green to wrinkled green. Now, this means that the F1 generation again inherited genetic factors from both parents, but only round and yellow phenotypes were showed. We can conclude that we can conclude that round and yellow were the dominant types. Now, let's talk about how to set up a dihybrid cross. Like before, a dihybrid cross is using a Punnett square, we can do a dihybrid cross, which is again a grid. But since there are um, different amounts of characteristic this time, instead of a two by two grid for monohybrid crosses, we're using a four by four grid for a dihybrid cross. Now, for the um, plant that was heterozygous that Mendel was crossing, which had four possible gametes, R, Y, both uppercase, R, Y, one uppercase and one lowercase, R, Y, one uppercase and one lowercase, and R, Y, both lowercase. Now, combining these gametes results in this wide array of different types of genotypes. And if you check all the different dominant and recessive um, genotypes, it can be shown that these um, different genotypes result in a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. So Mendel concluded some things from dihybrid crosses. He concluded that alleles for seed shape and color independently assorted to produce the gametes. And this led to the principle of independent assortment, which states that alleles at different loci separate independently of each other. Mendel also concluded that round and yellow must be dominant. The principle of independent assortment really is just a extension of the principle of segregation, which the principle of segregation says that um, gametes or alleles separate into equal probability into gametes, and the independent assortment just states something similar, and it's just an extension of the principle of segregation. So this concludes our video about um, Mendel's laws. Thank you for listening.